Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of Tafsir Saudi. Okay. We are in Surah Al Baqarah dealing with ayat number 258. Let's begin. Bismillah. It's a beautiful rainy day. Nice and gray. Quite refreshing for a good read. Have you, Bismillah. Have you not seen the one who argued with Ibrahim about his Lord? As Allah had granted him kinship, Ibrahim said, My Lord is he who gives life and death. He said, I give life and death. Ibrahim said, But it is Allah who brings the sun from the east. So bring it from the west if you can. Thus the one who disbelieved was dumbfounded. Allah does not guide wrongdoing people. So here, Law does not guide wrongdoing people. You do wrong, you can't expect that type of guidance. Have you not seen the one who argued with Ibrahim about his Lord? That is, have you not seen his audacity, ignorant behavior, stubbornness, and arguing about that concerning which there can be no doubt? Nothing made him do that except the fact that Allah had granted him kinship. So he transgressed and thought that he was in control of his subjects. Aha! He thought he was in control of his subjects. That prompted him to argue with Ibrahim about the lordship of Allah. So here, this to me hints at Fir'aun, right? When Musa went to him. Peace be upon Musa, Moses, and you can see the stubbornness of even a cultist today, where they'll deny the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they think they can control the masses. And he claimed that he could do that, or that he could do what Allah does. Ibrahim said, my lord is he who gives life and death, that is, he is the one, the only one who is in full control. He singled out the giving of life and death for mention because they are the greatest levels of control. Notice this here, okay. Life and death are the greatest levels of control. Greatest levels of control. Okay. When you're born, that's a life. We humans, we program AI, that's not exactly a life. Okay, death, no one can stop their death from happening. Yes, the transhumanists are trying to do life extension technology and they want to become more bionic. They're trying to do, I have a screenshot that I'll do eventually a video on, putting organs in pigs, engineering them so that they can just raise pigs, take the organs and put them into humans to keep them going right it's just you can't you can't escape death it's not gonna happen no matter how many vampire movies you watch or all the weird stuff you do not gonna happen captain Allah decides who gets pregnant yes you can terminate the pregnancy but you cannot just say bring the baby into life it's it's just not gonna happen what I mean by that is, okay, you do the deed, yeah, you can you can get pregnant. You can go to IVF, do those fertility treatments, but if Allah closes your womb, that's it for you. You can't have an artificial womb, punch in a bunch of little numbers, uh, take your egg and take his sperm and be like, make a baby. It's just not the same thing, no matter how many people try to push for that. So the highest level of control being life and death is definitely a sign for people who reason. Atheists, though, don't see life as something miraculous the same way as someone who's spiritual does. And they don't think death is anything but just a discontinuation, like how you pluck a flower. Giving life is the beginning of life in this world. And giving death is the starting point for the events of the hereafter. Notice this right here. So when you're born into this realm, that's the life of this world. And when you die, 
Well, that's the starting point for the Ahira. So you don't really die die, you go on to a new existence. The one who was arguing with him said, I give life and death, but he did not say, I am the one who gives life and death because he did not claim to be independent of Allah or to have full control. Rather, he was claiming to do what he does as to control as he controls. He claimed that he could kill someone, thus having given him death, or he could let him live, thus having given him life. Yeah, the, this sort of emperor, right? Does he live? Does he die? Commodus and Gladiator, right? People who think that because they can, uh, the power is power when you can command others to kill for you. And you can command others to be spared. When Ibrahim saw the flaws in his argument and heard him say something that is not fit to cause doubt, let alone be proof for his argument, he ignored his argument and went on to say, But it is Allah who brings the sun from the east, that is, he referred to something visible that everyone acknowledges, even that disbeliever. So here, an atheist might say, Allah doesn't bring the sun. Okay, well, can your scientists make the sun go somewhere else? Can you stop the sun from its movement? And if you did, what would happen? So bring it from the west if you can. Here he was going along with his argument. If he was really telling the truth as he claimed, when Ibrahim presented to him an argument that could not, that he could not counter. Thus the one who disbelieved was dumbfounded, that is, he was confounded and could not give an answer. Thus his argument was defeated and was proven to be specious and flawed. This is the state of the stubborn defender of falsehood. The stubborn defender of falsehood, who wants to wrestle with the truth and fight it. He will be defeated and subdued. Hence Allah Sojao said, Allah does not guide wrongdoing people. Rather, he leaves them in their disbelief and misguidance. So, some people will remain in their misguidance and disbelief as we see. So, we should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guided us. They are the ones who choose that for themselves. Otherwise, if they were really seeking the truth and guidance, he would have guided them to it made it easy for them to reach. This verse offers definitive proof that Allah is the only one who can create and control. So Allah is the only one who can create and control. I think atheists really struggle with the control part because they think by them seeing people do acts of evil that this then means that God doesn't have power. And I always found that odd. They don't see pregnancy as anything miraculous. They don't see the body decaying as anything of a sign. They've lost their wonder. They're in this sort of nihilistic pit. Therefore he is the only one whom people should worship, turn to, and put their trust in, in all situations. Ibn Al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said, in this debate, there is a very subtle point, which is that the foundation of polytheism and all peoples goes back to worship of heavenly bodies and graves. Then, idols were made to represent them. So, idols were made to represent them. And people get attached to these representations, most clearly. Remember that story I did of the Catholic lady chained herself to the statue of Michael? Thus, the two points of evidence produced by Ibrahim to highlight the falseness of other gods is summed up in one sentence, which states that Allah alone is the one who gives life and death, and that the living being that will die cannot be regarded as divine, either during life or after death. So, what is life, right? If you're a vegetable in a coma, you're alive, 
but you're not yourself, your consciousness. So some people might argue they can animate a half-dead person and call that life, but you can't create that soul. The robot that you've coded into with your math talking to you, he's only as intelligent as you've made him. Like that movie Chappie, the creator, the robot guy, he goes like, I am your maker, Chappie, you have to listen to me. Because he sees the robot going led astray by the gangsters. So even the human who creates a robot, he can't control the robot. But he can power down and help the robot live. It's very strange conceptions there that make you see that, you know, humans, they look at how complex their body is and think there's nothing to it. Just the squishiness of your organs, you know, should let you see how fragile we are. If a robot who's made of metal is fragile, how are we not also fragile? Hairless, infections used to take people out really easy before antibiotics. Whew. I mean, tons of just awfulness. So, life and death being in the control of our maker and us having humbleness, knowing that we're not going to live forever, that tomorrow isn't promised to anyone, and that you'll be judged by the deeds you do on earth, well, that's going to change it. It's going to change it drastically. An atheist who thinks nothing happens after death will only live for the day, but they will make more immoral decisions because they don't think they'll be punished for anything that they've done. That living being has an all-powerful Lord who subdues and controls all and who gives life and death. How can one who is like that be a God in whose image idols are made and who is worshipped instead of Allah? Like, how could you even make an idol even representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is so beyond our control to even comprehend? That's also another aspect of the absurdity of idols. You can't encapsulate something like that into a picture. By the same token, the heavenly bodies, the brightest and biggest of which is the sun, also have a Lord and are controlled by and subject, subjugated to Him. They have no control of themselves at all. So this is another factor here. The sun has no control over itself. Who decrees where it goes? The atheists won't really want to look at that. I'll just think it's like a random loop, a random spinning. But when you see how the sun is a mercy, but also a punishment, some places where it's super hot, you're like, that's pretty trippy. It's like, it's like, however the sun really moves, I don't know, but comes super close. Oh, get away from me. It's too hot. I need shade. And then when it's really like feeling far away and you're cold, you're like, oh man. My fingers are frostbitten. It's so cold right now. You can't yell at the sun to come, and it's not like they're gonna. The scientists are gonna get some ships and send in some robots and pull the sun or whatever they want to do to make the sun uh, move in a different location and change the atmospheric temperatures and climates and all the different environmental shifts. They tried to do cloud seeding. Their weird chemtrail experiments and they're trying to have weather technology and they're always doomsdaying about the end of the world uh, you know because of fossil fuels but they still can't control the Sun how it moves and so it is strange that an atheist would get mad at someone saying that there's a system to that that we don't understand. Rather, their Lord and Creator brings them from the East, so they yield to His command and will, and are subjugated and are under control. There is no God to be worshipped except Allah. Perfectly stated, and it is just miraculous when you look at the moon, the sun, how it moves, the rain, you can't command rain. You can't command the snow. The best we can do is give us some air conditioner and some heating. And before that, we had to have trees. Think how long it takes a tree to grow. 
how people had to chop down trees, also try to plant more trees, and how long each tree goes and how fast the fire consumes. It's really fascinating, I tell you. What do you think? Let me know, and if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so via the blog, which is www.subscribestar.com slash See you there. Family's home, so gotta go.